So let's continue our talk on mood disorders. Let's just recap, mood, mood disorders are characterized by elevations in mood, depressions in mood. So this topic is gonna be on bipolar disorders. Bipolar disorder is characterized by fluctuations in mood. So you have your highs and you have your lows. And we talked about lows when we talked about depression. Now what are highs? We have different type of bipolar disorder and they are characterized by the presence or absence of a manic episode. The manic episode is an incredible high. Manic episodes have to last at least one week. Have to have at least three of these symptoms. And these symptoms include distractibility, insomnia, they just can't sleep, grandiosity, they think they have this great self-image of themselves. They think they're this great person. They can do all these things flight of ideas they feel like there's a thousand ideas going through their mind at once agitation or activity speech flight of speech and thoughtlessness which is basically recklessness I'll give you an example of all this so this is an incredible high these people will be up all night working they'll think they're onto something that's way more important or way more significant than it really is. They might think, oh, I'm really close to a cure for cancer or I think I'm gonna win the Nobel Prize and they'll work and they'll work and they'll work. They'll stay up all night long. They have a flight of ideas so they can't really form ideas. They can't really talk to you because everything's going at a million miles per hour. They're, they can be agitated. Their speech is all over the place. Thoughtlessness, they're reckless, they might use your credit card to buy a ton of you know extravagant gifts and stuff because they think, oh, I'm gonna make it big, I'm gonna, I'm gonna win that Nobel Prize. Yeah. So this is all very serious, this is an incredible high, and these patients need to be hospitalized. Because at this time, they're they're a danger to themselves and to others. So you need to hospitalize them. That's the high part. Now, what's the low part? Well, I guess come Compared to this, anything is low, right? So you can have a lower part, so that's called hypomania. That's just a milder form of this. So instead of one week, you have at least four days. Instead of at least three of these, you have some sort of milder form. So if they talk about a student that's, you know, instead of staying up all night, maybe stays up till three, works really hard um, for about a week, but still is coherent, comprehensive, not you know extravagantly spending money and stuff like that that'd be hypomania a little bit less severe these you do not need to hospitalize it's just not as severe and then last but not least another low you can have is just depression so what are the types of bipolar disorder you can have bipolar one bipolar one is characterized by a manic episode that is the defining feature that you must know. That is the elevation, the high. Is there a low? In about the majority of cases, there is a low, but it's not needed for diagnosis. You need to know that. All you need to make the diagnosis of bipolar disorder is that manic episode. That's why it's so important. Bipolar two is slightly less severe. So the high will be slightly less or high, so hypomania. The low will be depression. And then you have one more form called psychothymic. This is a even milder form, it can last over two years. We talked about dysthymic when we talked about depression. We call that that really long, kind of milder, but more chronic form of depressed mood. In the same vein, we have psychothymic. So those two are very similar in, the, in their time course and their mild manner. Shouldn't be too hard to memorize those two, okay? That is bipolar one, bipolar two, psychothymic. How do you, how are you gonna treat them? Well, drugs include mood stabilizers. These are gonna be your lithium. These are gonna be your anti-epileptics. 
anti-psychotics. Anti-psychotics like olazapine, we're going to talk about that when we talk about psychotic disorder. So, won't talk about it here, but just know it is um, often considered one of the first-line treatments. Anti-epileptics, these include things like valproic acid, carbamazepine. If you're from my alma a moderate and you've taken your neuro block before you're taking your psych block, so you should know what these do, yeah, and the side effects of these. So valproic acid, the mechanism is not well known, but side effects are. That's the one that causes neural tube defects. Um, carbamazepine, can you tell me what that does? That's the one that blocks, blocks, <laughs> blocks sodium channels, potentiates GABA, decreases firing, neural firing. That's probably why it can help in mood stabilization. So again, always recall in farm, you know, don't just memorize what the drug is. Uh, recall all the side effects, recall the mechanism of action, because that's probably how they're gonna ask it. They'll talk about manic depression or bipolar, which is easy enough to, to pick up on the question stem, and then all of a sudden flip the script and talk about pharmacology. So they'll say, they'll treat it with carbamazepine. What's the action of the drug? And you're caught off guard. So don't get caught off guard. Whenever you learn about pharma, always just take that second and remember just the mechanism, side effects, okay? Lithium is a, is a funny one. Here's how it works. Nobody knows. It's one of those drugs that we use a lot of these metal drugs, mineral drugs we use, like lithium, magnesium, we don't know the mechanism of action because these substances are used all over our body. So we kind of just throw it in the body and see what works, see what sticks. And fortunately for us, it's great for stabilizing mood. If you give it to a normal patient, it doesn't do diddly dork. But if you give it to someone that is manic, great for stabilizing mood. So lithium is an important drug. However, it does have a side effects that you must know. Because we don't know the mechanism, they're going to really focus on the side effects. Side effects include things like the fact that it goes into your kidneys and it competes against ADH. So you can get diabetes insipidus. You also should know that certain drugs like thiazides just increase that toxic toxicity, increase that side effect that much more. And certain drugs like potassium sparing diuretics will decrease that activity. The exact mechanism is not quite known. You might say potassium thiazide is just kind of block lithium reabsorption, but but I, I really doubt they'll ask you about the mechanism, but just know thiazide increased toxicity, case bearings decrease toxicity. That's your kidneys. Lithium doesn't only work there. It can lower the effect of TSH and thyroid hormones and cause hypothyroidism. It can cause tremors. Tremors are very common. Um, hypothyroidism and Diabetes and sympathy, as most people remember, but tremors is another big one that you should remember. And the tremors become um, consistent and really pervasive, then you might have to add beta blockers, okay? That's tremors. And then one that you absolutely should not miss is the fact that it's a teratogen. It causes something called Epstein anomaly, where your tricuspid valve basically falls into your right ventricle. So there's your right atrium, there's your tricuspid valve, there's your right ventricle. Tricuspid valve will Go like this. And that causes a very large atrium and a very hypoplastic ventricle. And that's no good. The, a lot of times um, the questions I see will be about a pregnant woman who's being treated for bipolar disorder. They won't explicitly say lithium. You just have to infer because lithium is such a popular drug for bipolar dis disorder. So don't ex expect them to explicitly say lithium. Just infer that and then say, what is the patient's baby at risk for developing? Epstein anomaly. Or look, or look for something talking about tricuspid valve displacement, okay? That does it for this video. Hope you enjoyed. See you next time.